Hi, everyone. Welcome to Automating DNS, DHCP, and IPAM with Maestro. I'm Lauren Malhoy. I'm the Director of Technical Content at Men and & Mice, and I'll be running you through this quick five or 10 minute demo today. Um, we're going to start using Postman for the first time in this series um, to find out more about IP addresses in this demo. Before we get to that, though, I do just want to briefly go over what Maestro does so we can kind of level set on why, uh, why the APIs are so important as well. So Maestro is a DNS, DHCP, and IPAM, or DDI, uh, overlay and orchestration solution. What that means for you is that it gives you a really easy way to manage your entire DDI environment, um, both in the cloud and on-premises, using just one GUI or one API, depending on what you're trying to do. So for example, you know, when we're talking about APIs, if you want to create a workflow involving grabbing IP address information, like we're going to do today, probably as part of a larger workflow of eventually. Um, but, but while you're creating this uh, workflow or the script, you don't have to create several different scripts in order to grab information from Amazon and then a different one for Azure and a different one for your on-premises uh, solutions. You can just use Maestro and Maestro will know where to go to communicate to get all of that information for you. That way, if you decide to change services later or um, you switch where your application lives, Maestro will still have all of that information and you don't have to do anything to change those scripts for those workflows. Okay, so let's jump in. Like I said, today we're going to start using Postman for the first time in the series. Um, if you're not familiar with Postman, maybe you've seen some of our, our previous uh, demos where we use Swagger. It's, it's similar to Swagger in that we can communicate via Postman with our APIs. Um, Postman actually offers some deeper, some more advanced features and capabilities um, that we'll get to eventually, creating your own APIs even. Um, but for now, we're just going to stick with uh, communicating with the APIs as well. If you do want more information on how to use Swagger, of course, you can always go to our automation playlist and all of that information will be here uh, in those short snippets. Okay, let's jump back to Postman then. You can see here, I'm, I've clicked on home. I can see information about my account because I've created this free account within Postman. Um, I've downloaded the desktop app, although there is a browser version available. Um, I'm gonna jump into workspaces and just go to my workspace, just the default workspace to get started. And what we're gonna do here is just go ahead and click on that plus sign to create a new call, an API call. And then I'm gonna jump right to authorization. Um, I will get into authorization more in a future uh, upcoming demo, but for now I'm just gonna click on basic auth and you can see I have my username and password in here. We'll jump back to params, but let's start up here. If I click on that drop down menu, I see get. Um, there are a lot of options in here. Probably the four most popular that, that we'll use getting started are get, which allows us to read information. We'll be using that today. Post allows us to create information, create an object within our DDI environment. Put allows us to update those objects. And then delete, of course, allows us to remove those objects. But like I said, we're going to stick with get for today. And then it asks us to enter a request URL. And this is where having API documentation open and available and accurate um, is so important because this is where the API documentation is where we get all of this information. So if I jump into my API documentation, I can see here my REST API docs um, and then I have IPAM records open. So what I really need is just to copy and paste uh, this URL up to API and we'll open Postman back up, copy that in. So that tells me the general area where I need to go. And then of course I need to specify um, where we're actually going to get this information from in this case. So we'll go jump back into the API. And of course I am getting um, IPAM, the IPAM record information for a specific IP address. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this particular command and paste that here in Postman. So now you can see I have that slash API slash IPAM record slash curly brackets address for reference. Um, we can't just leave the curly brackets in there. The curly brackets indicate that we need to fill something in there. Now, you know, through the powers of deduction, because we are getting information about an IP address, we could just go in and fill in that IP address. 
If we want to use some more scientific reasoning, again, we can go back into the APIs um, and look over here under this model schema and click on model actually and get all of the information that we need for those key value pairs, get those definitions right in here. So I see the address reference is uh, an object reference and then I can include the address which is of type string and the address of course is the IP address. Um, so lots of that information in here. We'll go back to Postman for now and we'll just click send. Now down here is where I get the response. Um, so you can see the status is 200 okay. 200 uh, generally means that it is successful when we're doing the get command, when we're trying to read information. Anything in the 200s, you might get a 201 when you are trying to post something. But anything in the 200s means that you are successful. 400s generally means it's not successful. Um, but you can you know, Google uh, status codes, API status codes or response codes and get all of the information you ever wanted. Now, I can even see my response time, how long it took. Now I am communicating from uh, the Midwest US to all the way over to Iceland, servers over in Iceland. So the response time might be a little bit slow, but generally Maestro APIs are very quick, um, especially when you have it installed, you know, on premises or in the cloud near you. Um, so I highly recommend looking into what that looks like if you are running a proof of concept or something. Um, down here in the body, uh, you can see I have pretty highlighted, and then we can choose whether we want that information to be in JSON format, in XML, for example, or any of these others. I prefer JSON. Uh, it's a little more human readable and uh, hierarchical. So we can just kind of go through and see what information we get from simply searching for this IP address. Now, of course, we get the IP address. We can see whether it's claimed or not within Maestro. This particular address is not actually claimed. Um, the DNS information is, is in there, the DNSA record um, telling me what the uh, FQDN is. I can see the reverse lookup information. I can even get custom property information or DHCP information. Pretty much whatever I require about that IP address is going to be in there. Um, so you can even see that I'm the owner and it lives in Indianapolis, which isn't true, um, but we can pretend for my lab environment. Um, so this is a great way to get started. There are a few other ways that we can do this using the parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this IP address for right now, and then we'll jump into filling out the parameters because as we make larger uh, API calls, as we make larger uh, workflows in general, we're going to need to know how to use this just to make it a little bit easier so we don't have you know, the, the long request URL that no one can read or understand, right? So we can go ahead and fill out our key value pairs. We know that address reference is required. So we'll put that in there. Remember that's what was in curly brackets. And then we'll put in our 10.13.0.10. And then when you do fill out the parameters here, you have to specify whether um, this is a get uh, command. Um, so you go ahead, I put in the, the um, whack and then get, of course, but the rest of it was filled out for me. And then we can press send, and you can see we get the same information again. That's all I have for today. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions for other demos you'd like to see, please let us know, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks.